So the trend continues, as I'm sure that it will for a while into this year for Modern Warfare 2, but a title update with more changes than meets the eye. Last night, we broke down what was detailed from Modern Warfare 2's update 1.11 and what was shared by Infinity Ward. Today, we're detailing what wasn't shared explicitly and some changes you should be aware of, both good and in some cases bad. Today, we're taking another look at some stealth changes in Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ. So as we go along, drop your thoughts below. What are you liking out of this update? Anything in particular? Anything you're not too fond of? What are the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay updated with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ. We're chasing down 600,000 subscribers, so if you're part of that 70% of viewers who are not subscribed, I'd love to have you in the community. And finally, check out today's sponsor, Ona Saber, but more on them in a bit. For now, let's discuss the changes made under the radar with update 1.11 for Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ. So the first one we're going to talk about is one that is actually the reason this video wasn't up earlier in the day, because I was kind of hoping that it would correct itself, we'd see it brought back online, but this being the Modern Warfare FC event. It was visible and you could interact with it, but then it just kind of disappeared. Now, I imagine this comes back online at the latest tomorrow or Friday, like super early Friday morning, because there is a pick that you can end up choosing for a match between the USA and England, but there's no reason given right now as to why it was taken offline, but again, expecting it to be back. But this, this FC event is a pick prediction event with actual rewards, surprisingly, stuff that is actually actually pretty nice for just simply predicting who you think is going to win a match in the World Cup. The main part of this is simply just scrolling over to select which team of the current prediction you think will win that match. The current one that was up on deck before it was taken offline, and again, why I think it's going to be returning here as of tomorrow or very early Friday, was the USA versus England. So that is the match that actually does happen on Friday, so the first of these upcoming matches that you'll want to place a bet on. Now, this is something that if you end up getting your prediction right, you'll end up getting 10,000 and XP for the correct prediction, actually a decent amount of XP, the country calling card, and a country war track to go along with it for your vehicles. In their rules page, it does say that there's consolation prizes for those losing teams and predictions. To what those will be, we won't know until Friday in that first prediction when it's over. I wouldn't be surprised though if it's that calling card and war track still granted, maybe just not that XP and the count towards the blueprints, but speaking about blueprints, the additional rewards and bonus items are that if you correctly predict two match outcomes, you'll end up getting attack and blueprints, there's a Modern Warfare 2019 combat pack that reminds me of the design here on this one. Not sure how similar it actually is off the top of my head, but then at four matches correctly guessed as well, you end up getting an STB 556 blueprint. So just simply for placing bets and maybe getting free XP, calling cards, and war tracks, you also have the potential to get free blueprints as well. So fingers crossed this does come back here and it is something that ends up being usable for all players. Fingers crossed, maybe even by the time this video goes up, but for the time being, just know that it was temporarily taken offline for some some reason, but should be returning here shortly. Now, that's the last that we'll talk about the FC event. Surprisingly, the Codball mode wasn't introduced just yet, so we'll see when that actually comes, but beyond that, we saw also introduced was the first combat pack for Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. This being something that's unfortunately exclusive to PlayStation users, but it comes along with the Oni Tactical Operator skin, which this is something that if you don't have Oni or you didn't before today, you should be granted his Operator overall. Previously, it was just a pre-order bonus on PlayStation, so you had to actually pre-order the game. If you bought it after the launch of the game, you wouldn't have them, but this now should credit you for that Oni Operator. Then you'll end up having the Oni Revenger FSS Hurricane Blueprint, the Oni Oracle X13 Auto Blueprint, the Sony Oni Calling Card, the Demon Fang Weapon Charm, the Welcome Death Sticker, and the Fractal Demon Emblem. All of those, again, for simply free download, despite, again, Sony always sending you receipts saying, thank you for your purchase. So beyond that, we have a bunch of other things to talk about still. One of the ones that is an interesting change that went under the radar, but is really out of the ordinary by comparison is that some weapons actually got adjusted across the board and I'm not talking like balancing I'm talking that you might not have them max ranked anymore. Some weapons actually ended up getting an additional level added to their weapon progression, those weapons being the SO14, MX9, Bryson 800, the RAL MG, the EBR14, the MCPR300, the SPX80, the P890, and the Basilisk. Now, with the way the weapon progression system works in Modern Warfare 2 and with other past Call of Duties, well, adding another level means that we got another attachment, right? 
Oh, actually, yeah. So for getting another level on each of these weapons, you'll end up getting another attachment, those going as follows. The SO14 unlocks the Model 1957 stock, the MX9 unlocks the 9mm sub op ammo, the Bryson 800 unlocks the Mac 8 Frostbite muzzle, the RAL MG unlocks the demo folding stock, the EBR14 unlocks the FSS spider grip, the MCPR300 unlocks the FSS Merc stock, the SPX80 unlocks the Max DMR precision stock, the P890 unlocks the BP grain grip, and the Basilisk unlocks the 500 armor piercing rounds. So that is a handful of new attachments offered up across the board for use depending on what weapon platform and weapon category across various number of weapons. But does this finally take care of all the locked attachments that we may end up seeing in the gunsmith? Surprisingly, despite there now being nine more attachments accounted for, no, it actually doesn't take care of all the locked attachments. There's still a handful of attachments visible across gunsmithing with really no explanation why as to they're locked and how to unlock them. It's possible they could be from the upcoming Chimera in mid-season, but nothing is guaranteed. Perhaps there's other weapons that may have had more levels and air quotes added because this was actually something that was apparently seen in rare cases where players had the ability to rank above the max level on some of these weapons before the update went out without them realizing it. So maybe that's something that can happen here for for other weapons, but right now there is still a bunch of locked attachments that we don't have any explanation on. Now beyond that, there are still quite a few topics that I want to touch on here, but before we do, I want to discuss today's video sponsor. A little different of a sponsor than we may be used to here on the channel, but I'm a big Star Wars guy. I don't get to talk about it much here on the channel, but I love this one. I always wanted a genuine lightsaber when I was a kid, and with the holidays right around the corner, if you've got a fan in the family or a collector, check out Ona Saber for some high quality collectibles. Whether you're displaying one in the office or looking to get genuine use out of them, there's something for every fan of the franchise. Right now, they're running a Black Friday deal where two sabers get you $100 off your order, three or more get you $150 off your order, both of which are automatically applied those discounts when added to your cart. And if you're not looking to buy in bulk and just want one singular saber, you can get 20% off with code ESP. Not full espresso this time, just ESP. But the deal ends November 30th, so act fast and check out Ona Saber. Now, beyond that, we had a couple of additional changes, some smaller stuff that we can kind of breeze past, but definitely worth noting. Firstly, when you start up the game, there's a new COD HQ start screen that just says Call of Duty before throwing you into that sort of landing page for multiplayer, DMZ, and Warzone. There apparently was a new streak notification added in in some rare instances. Doesn't seem like all streaks were added to this sort of notification system, but you might see a pop-up on screen that states that a streak is inbound. The CDL playlists have returned here in regards to private matches, but the big difference is that you can no longer glitch them to end up seeing unreleased and upcoming items or to be able to equip things like Orion camo, whereas you have not earned it on your main account. That stuff now adheres to the same unlock and visibility rule sets as regular private matches. The M13B apparently has a bit more of a difficulty now in unlocking it, whereas it may have been a pain for quite a few number of people already. But apparently inside the radiation zone, there's a sort of EMP effect that shuts off vehicles and does not allow you to drive them in there. So you can't just one hit the chemist by running him over. And surprisingly, from a Reddit clip that I saw, it seems like even if you take the sort of armored vehicles with the MGs attached to them, the MGs don't even work, which doesn't make a whole ton of sense by comparison. But that was something to consider as well. The battle pass timer was now added to the battle pass overall, where it shows a countdown that will now bring us to February 1st for an end date of season season one and start date of season two. Now, this is actually kind of far away. What equates out to, if my memory serves me correctly, about a two week longer duration to a normal season, which makes me wonder if this is just a placeholder or if we'll actually see that new content come on the first, because we've seen the countdown for the timers get changed on a regular basis, surprisingly. I'd say that of all the battle passes that we've seen since Modern Warfare 2019 introduced them in season one of Modern Warfare, I'd wager at least 30% of those battle passes had their dates extended, shortened, or in some way adjusted since. So it is possible that we may see this go a little bit shorter, a little bit longer. We just don't know at the moment, but right now there's a tentative end date of February 1st for start date of then season two. Now, the final thing that was added with this update under the radar is a funnel content pack. This one's a paid one though, so don't really care too much to go into too much detail for it, but it is something that is the Desert Rogue Pro Pack. Our first Pro Pack of, again, Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. This will cost you $19.99 of real cash, not COD points, but it comes along with 2,400 COD points, a Reyes Operator skin, the Dust Devil SO14 Blueprint, the Sandstorm Lockman Sub Blueprint, the Charming Camel Charm, the Desert Death sticker and the desert pro emblem so 
that stuff really up to you if you want to end up doing it. To me, it's kind of like getting bonus items for buying COD points because $20 is what it costs to end up getting 2,400 COD points. So that first thing listed with that price point is essentially what you end up getting and everything else beyond that is bonus. But again, don't really care too much to go into detail of that. But that is what was updated here with update 1.11 and a little bit beyond here because again, none of this stuff was really communicated. So that is what we're going to call it. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What are you guys looking forward to in regards to any upcoming changes? Anything that you guys really like out of this so far? Are you hoping that that FC event comes back and we get to get those votes in by Friday? Personally, I am. I think that's a really cool little just freebie for content and XP. So that's it. That's what we're going to call it. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What are you guys looking forward to out of that? But if you enjoyed the video, you found it out on Insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related. For now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.